Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen 2. My name is Saiken and this is the legendary Iron Man run of uh, the Long War of the Chosen 2 mod, <coughs> Better 1. It is uh, the 30th session of uh, this run and uh, hence a little bit time for reflection. So far we're in month number four and have done a really good job in keeping the aliens at bay. But what I do not know at the time of this recording is whether or not the content uh, is interesting to see. So what I am going to, uh, to do is I will probably uh, make this the last recordable session for now. I'll upload uh, the videos on YouTube and maybe I'll uh, do a bit of a uh, few extra sessions which I would have uh, in case uh, the content is uh, interesting. And I would ask you to leave a comment down below if you want to see a continuation of this campaign. Um, the reason why I'm asking is Long War 2 is quite a grind and I want to make sure that everyone's on board and that the content is received well before putting hundreds of hours into it. <clears throat> Overall, to be realistic, legendary Iron Man run of Long War 2 can easily take up to 150 to 200 um, missions. It is way longer than the normal game. A normal run um, is usually around legendary around 50 missions. Uh, the last one, uh, Army of Two, is it was 80 missions. So I was I just want to make you aware that there is um, a lot of ground to cover. Um, not everything of it will be repetitive, and I'll do my best to not grind too much. But the very nature of the game, Long War, is that you gotta grind the missions in order to be successful. So. Uh, this is a good start or stopping point, intermediate halting point, where I want to get your feedback on whether or not you enjoy the content. Do the videos need to be uh, shorter? Do the videos um, uh, is is the video content good? And if I get enough positive comments and enough viewers over the first thirty uh, sections up up to here, then I am going to continue the campaign. I think it's very promising and. We can definitely go far into the campaign, if not even beat it um, in this very run. Uh, but I uh, want to, like I said, make sure that the channel produces content that is actually interesting for you guys. So once this is uploaded, uh, please be aware, I probably have like two or three additional <clears throat> additional uh, sessions um, stored so that uh, I could continue uploading. But I need the um, reconfirmation that we're on the right track. With that being said, we're now uh, moving into um, the East African um, retaliation mission. Stop the advent retaliation and defend uh, the resistance haven. Uh, this here is going to be our squad. We have um, equipped it the last time. Uh, we're going in with an eight-man squad. And it's going to be fun, guys. It is going to be fun. No preparation time, straight up mission time. Time to motor. Let's begin the mission. And here we go. We're directly jumping in hot. Rescue as many rebels as possible and extract all XCOM soldiers. Here's our extraction zone. Got 13 rebels to rescue. And boy oh boy do we need to speed this one up. I already know those missions. Effectively every soldier that we're losing is going to be a real net loss. Um, a real net loss for us in terms in terms of um, in terms of um, advent. Uh, uh, not advent. Ah, what am I saying? It's going to be a real loss in uh, terms of um, resistance um, advisory. So these here are real rookies that are working within the resistance advisory. Uh, got 
two mutants and what appears to be a mutant with one less hit point. Three mutants. Okay. We fill up. Let's see if we can trigger him. Yeah, you know, we could. <clears throat> Let's actually try to get the um, sectors to move. Yeah, not really a lot of damage. And look at that. The Chosen. Once again. This should get their attention. I was hoping they would uh, already move after the grenade. They unfortunately didn't. Time for run and gun. I want to get in very aggressive. From the get-go, make clear that we're not going to fuck around with anyone here. No problem. Bring it on. Alright, we could throw a flashbang, but we're going to do that later. Ah, look at that. Just barely out of range. Fifty-fifty on a trooper. Missed, unfortunately. No, no point in using run and gun if we can't really approach them we got a rifle here let's use the flashbang to essentially um, focus them and keep them down there And putting our rookie over here. We'll get you guys, and once we do, it's not going to be fun anymore. Ah, 
AKA we're going to fuck you up. Just wait for it. That was unfortunately the very first um, dead operative. Good, more than willing to give up the concealment here if that means that we get a bonus kill out of it. Before we do anything with the snipers. We could effectively hit every single one of them. Don't want to use another grenade. Fifty-fifties on all of them. Let's try to get the trooper. Ah, fortunately, a miss. Like I said, I, I actually wanted to get the snipers in decent position. Didn't work out so far. Alright, both here do have eight hit points. I am more afraid about the stun lancer. Solid chance of even hitting the Star Lancer. <sighs> I really don't want to use another grenade. Finally. I was hoping that it would uh, die beforehand. Moving in. There's a realistic chance that we're actually going to kill it. Unfortunately, one damage short. And we now have the lamentable decision between a swarm of loss that will probably deal more damage than a single um, zombie or essentially a 30% chance to, to kill a sector. Let's try the 30%. Yeah, it didn't work out. 
I'd rather take the zombie. Okay, we know there are at least two more packs. Gotta collect the loot. And gotta deal with the uh, with the loss. You know, we're one round, uh, we're going to be disoriented for one round. Might as well end the sector. Rookie takes a few shots. Yeah, she was pretty useful. So question of the day, are we going to trigger the pack down here? Apparently the answer is no. In terms of positioning, let's get the loot and as many of the losses as possible. Yeah, again, the SMGs are not the best weapons to deal with losses in the first place. Moving to here. Yeah, and that seems to be our first resistance operator uh, whom we saved. Well, good for us, right? Enemy 
Unfortunate. Okay. I mentioned we need good positions for the snipers. This here is going to be a really decent shooting angle. Taxman can take it. And our other sniper, I mean, over here would be a good angle, but doesn't unfortunately work. Okay, I do have a sliver of hope. That we will get at least two more of these down. And since we do have an autoloader turbo here, we can relatively easily take those out. Problem is, we know that there is a pack over here, which then again means we got to take some cover. We can't just stand in the open and not expect to be ambushed. Good. We're taking an overwatch. Wolverine has at least one overwatch shot, kind of protecting this civilian here and the civilian here. Okay, so that's three down. <laughs> yeah, Bradford, thank you. Interesting enough, I mean, we could be faster in engaging the packs and actually stopping them, but the loss take a lot of time, right? Like, that was, what, an entire round of us just getting rid of loss. Takes a lot of ammunition. Got to be really careful here. Okay, so this guy moved over there. We're probably triggering another pack and an overwatch. Interesting. I think he's the only guy who can move with an overwatch. Okay, let's see about our snipers. Decent shooting angles, unfortunately just a 50-50 as always. Edwin has the tendency to pretty precisely find full cover all the time. And the problem is that um, they have removed uh, shooting angles, which essentially means it really doesn't matter um, how close you are to, to a proper... Uh, to a proper angle, you will always get the full uh, full cover malice. Malice.
Yeah, we can't kill him. Moving in would be dangerous because we don't know about... We don't know about um, the Viper pack. It may or may not be there still. Can't even reach him with our melee attack. This is going to remove the overwatch so we can freely move and maybe it's going maybe it's also going to trigger the other pack. It is not. Alright, Rookie moves up. I think we can use the Rookie in order to free the operatives. On Overwatch. Can the resistance operative rescue other resistance operatives? No. Heading there now. Moving closer. Basically getting in high uh, in high ground position. See, thirty three percent. That is really suboptimal. Might as well go on Overwatch to catch him when he is traversing into a different into a different location. Yeah, that was foreseeable. They are always aiming for the ones with... They are always aiming for the ones with uh, Overwatch. That was good, by the way. And there is the last pick. That is so bullshit. I mean, I get it if you're not in, uh, if you're not, if you're not in cover to begin with. I get it that you should be punished for it. Okay, no problem whatsoever. What I don't get is the pack moves into uh, in on you, and you have a, an operative down here, like fully in cover, really decently in cover, right? And just because the game decides that it wants to move a snake over to here, he then is flanked and gets a shot. Like, no, the zero counterplay is possible with that. And there's a difference between making something difficult and making something just weird. Good. We're going to flashbang them in case 
things are not going to work out. Let's start with the snipers regardless. This here could be a one-shot kill. Come on. Getting into better shooting position, unfortunately. Didn't work out super well for us. So it's going to trigger the overwatch, which we're decently going to ignore. And let's try to shut down the Viper. Crit. Okay, grazing shot, of course. By the way, mind you, we have even marked uh, the Viper, but thanks to its dodge, it is difficult to come by. <laughs> Another grazing shot. Let's get high ground here. And can we please kill the Viper? 40%. Yeah, the weapon range is too far, of course. Any chance to get two of these guys? No. Alright, next try. Let's kill the Viper. You know, I don't like killing that Viper here, but I'm very aware that that's probably the only good move that I have available right now. And thanks to it dodging multiple shots in a row, there wasn't really much we could have done.
Okay, unfortunately none of the snipers has any sort of vision range. Gotta get aggressive now. Moving up. Down to one hit point, okay. Another run and gun. All the way up to here. I want to make sure that we're very, very uh, thorough this time. And let's kill the Viper. Of course, minimum damage. This whole mission has uh, this wonderful notion of nothing's really working out well. Some of it, some of it is RNG and that's just a normal part of XCOM, I don't mind that. But I'm really in substantial disagreement with the design decision um, that a pot can aggro on you. And even though you've done everything in your power to make sure that you are in cover, there's still the chance that the pot just randomly decides to move at any location, which is not at your discretion. And if you're unlucky, that can mean, or that could mean, and if you're unlucky, that could mean that the pot essentially gets a flanking shot on you. In this case, it almost killed a soldier, which I think is hilarious. Okay, we lost four, which means we're in down to nine resistance operators there. I guess time for some recruitment. Or maybe another mission to uh, to get cap uh, captive spec. By the way, I understood that you are now allowed with uh, Long War 2 to put two uh, or even more generals on uh, one mission, which means that my tactic to just uh, train the Shinobis is actually not uh, the best one. Uh, there is no disadvantage of putting multiple generals or officers on, uh, on one mission. Only the highest level officer will get the officer uh, traits, but uh, everyone will get sidearm uh, abilities, so pistol abilities like fan fire and so on. And everyone can use the normal officer abilities such as shifting um, actions around. And that is actually super, super helpful. Let's see the pack. Um, Mitch here could definitely use um, uh, heat warheads which means uh, that his grenades will penetrate uh, 
additional points of armor and shred additional points. That's a lot of what he's going to do in the late game. Bladestorm. Almost no question asked. I mean, this here is okay, but Bladestorm is absolutely fantastic. And whilst we're at it, Shredder. Yeah, we wanted to do Fortify and Shredder as soon as possible. Eleven days of wound, uh, wounded. That is un very unfortunate. Oh, cool! And we got exactly the sort of class that we were looking for. A nice little specialist. So mobility, scope, two alarium cores, two stocks, psi offense. Really, really, really decent. Um, uh, really decent loot there. So. Our newest rookie has just become a specialist. Let me do the customization. Good, much better. Now that she's with us, um, we're not giving her a, a PCS yet. Although her mobility is really low, might as well increase that a tiny bit to get it up to 14. Cool. So that worked astonishingly well. I took the liberty in upgrading the officer school here. And with that, we're putting some of our uh, operatives uh, through the guerrilla training, officer training, that is. I think it takes, yeah, a few days. And with two slots, it should be fine. I'll just train uh, whomever I can get my hands on, plus all of the Shinobis. We can use it on cooldown. I don't, I don't really see an issue with that. Still wanting to invade uh, the headquarter, but we said we're doing that um, right uh, once the skirmisher is done. Now, seeing that we only have nine uh, soldiers left uh, open, going to do a little bit different strategy here. Let's get a few recruits. And I'm going to fly back to the Templar HQ and start healing faster. Oh no, wait a second. We wanted to build a radio station here to get the uh, to get the continent bonus. I remember. Yeah, that was more important. And another thing was, I know that we had a mission down here, eight days, to counter that uh, event. And I think we wanted to, to do that as soon as we have enough soldiers, which would mean right after the destruction of the alien relay. Yeah, the alien relay also. The alien relay also included um, included a couple of soldiers that are rather under leveled.
yeah on several of our key personals are here in the keystone mission i'm i'm wondering like where's everyone by the way Power ops. Oh, I can see. A team is simply busy training, infiltrating, part partially wounded. Actually, quite a few are wounded. So we're simply growing thin on numbers. Quite a few are tired. Yeah. Um, yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta look how to continue with that. Uh, anyways, uh, the next mission uh, would be the destruction of the alien relay mission up here to counter the dark event. Um, plus, gain some intel. I am going to look into that and uh, actually. Uh, we'll do that as well, but I, this here will be the last uploaded mission for now. Uh, again, in case you haven't heard it at the beginning, please leave a comment down below if you are interested in that sort of comment, and I will look at uh, YouTube analytics and see if this content here does well. If there is enough of a majority that would want to con see the continuation of this long war campaign, I'm more than willing to, <clears throat> to accommodate that and do it. If not, um, you're also free to leave suggestions for a different campaign idea. I will come up with uh, several other ideas of content and uh, we're going to see where it leads. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and as always have a great day and uh, see you soon. Bye bye.